Well, because the establishment media is focusing all of their attention on Donald Trump versus Hillary Clinton, you might not have realized that President Obama is bringing us perilously close to war with Russia. Now, Obama was set to meet with his foreign policy team today to discuss military options in Syria. Now, these options under consideration include direct strikes on Syrian military bases. So Russia has already made it very clear they've pledged to respond militarily to any direct strikes on Syrian forces. And so if the decisions that Barack Obama makes regarding Syria, they could literally spark off World War III. So obviously this is far more important than the Trump tapes and all of these victims who are coming out of the woodwork all of a sudden. But of course, everybody likes those scandalous newspapers on the side of the grocery store aisle, uh, you know, loves a good scandal. Russia is even telling its citizens to find out where their closest nuclear bunkers are. They had a two hour long broadcast saying, you know, nuclear war is imminent. This was a super apocalyptic broadcast um, telling viewers there in Moscow, if one should, if it should happen one day, every one of you should know where the nearest bomb shelter is. It's best to find out now. Now, who knows why Russia is pumping out this propaganda to its own citizens? I don't trust their government any more than I trust my own government when it comes to these type of things. Uh, but it's abundantly clear they are gearing up for some military action. And as we know, a lot of these countries trade heavily in arms and war is where the money is at. So we don't know really what they're doing behind the scenes, but war is on the horizon. But you would never know that because everyone's focusing on these stories that do not matter, which is why I think it's hilarious that President Obama in his speeches where he's stumping for Hillary Clinton is decrying America's wild, wild west on the media landscape. Okay, this is Thursday. He calls America's wild, wild west media environment for allowing conspiracy theorists a broad platform and destroying a common basis for debate. He recalled past days when just three television channels delivered fact-based news that most people trusted, also known as propaganda straight from the White House. Obama said democracy requires citizens to be able to sift through lies and distortions. Hmm. He says, we are going to have to rebuild within this wild, wild west of information flow some sort of curating function that people agree to. So they want to control your thoughts. They want to curate what you are able to access. They're not satisfied with the fact that their three main propaganda arms aren't really doing a very good job because no one trusts the media. They all know that they're pumping through this propaganda. So then he says, there has to be, I think, some sort of way in which we can sort through information that paces, passes some basic truthiness tests and those that we have to discard because they just don't have any basis in anything that's actually happening in the world. So we already know based on these WikiLeaks that they want a dumbed down population. They don't want people who can think for themselves. They want a compliant citizenry. So they don't like the fact that you have the ability to access alternate information. Obama is pushing for a ministry of truthiness. And lo and behold, Google is right there doing his beck and call. And they've just announced today uh, they've launched a fact check label. So this is a new feature, fact check. It'll be added uh, a label next to any news stories and search results. They say it's going to shine a light on its efforts to divide fact from fiction. Sites which already have a fact checking service can apply to be included to appear in search results. And so Google itself is going to determine whether a fact check is needed for a news story using the claim review technique. And it already labels stories with tabs such as opinion, related and local source. So, I mean, just like Hillary Clinton says, oh, if you need to fact check anything on me, just go to my website and I'll lay it all out for you there. That's what this fact check tool is going to look like, because let's not forget, Google was already accused of manipulating search results in favor for Hillary Clinton. As we know, Google's chairman, Eric Schmidt, uh, quietly funds a data company that provides services to the Clinton campaign. I mean, it just doesn't get any more clear than that. We also know by this WikiLeaks that it was actually John Podesta who linked up Google's executive chairman with the Hillary Clinton campaign. So just collusion at every level. Uh, we know, of course, the government gives major tax breaks to these companies. 
So it's, you know, a little pay to play. You do, you do us favors, we'll do you pay favors. You won't pay anything in taxes while you screw over the American people. They're all helping each other. It literally is like the movie They Live. Every day I watch the news and I'm just like, man, put on the glasses. And even though Google Trends is, sh is showing that internet users are wide awake and frankly, they're far more interested in the WikiLeaks data than these Trump allegations. You can look at uh, the Google Trends graph. It shows internet users are vastly more interested. Even on the day that the infamous Trump tape was released, Google searches for the WikiLeaks were still significantly higher. And they're really upset about that because you're only going to find the information about the WikiLeaks in the wild, wild west of the internet. The mainstream media is refusing to cover the WikiLeaks or they'll cover it just a tiny bit, just enough to say, well, there's no smoke here. There's nothing untoward. In fact, it kind of makes Hillary Clinton look like she's a sensible, just a good lady. And even with these latest Trump allegations, a former Miss Teen came out slamming the media witch hunt against Trump. She says he was an absolute gentleman. She went out to say, you know, they're contacting all of her fellow contestants from 1997. They want to do this hit piece. This was a producer at ABC News in New York. And she said, I'm going to be very truthful and let ABC know, ABC know that Donald Trump was an absolute gentleman. I never witnessed any inappropriate behavior whatsoever the entire time I was there. So I'm, I'm sure that her story is not going to make the news because it doesn't fit the narrative. And anything that doesn't fit the narrative isn't going to make it. Even things, you know, they got a fact check with Hillary Clinton. We know that a new WikiLeaks email reveals yet even more collusion between the Clinton campaign and the New York Times. They're talking about their uh, good relationships with Maggie Haberman of Politico, um, it, who also writes for the New York Times. But they talk about how she helps tee up stories that are beneficial for Hillary Clinton. They help her see... Uh, achieve her objectives. And then, of course, we have CNN, on the other hand. CNN, we know they did a total media blackout on Bill Clinton's son, uh, alleged son, Danny Williams. And there, a CNN anchor abruptly shut down a guest commentator Thursday. This was Utah Republican Party Chairman James Evan and Evans, and he said, you know, we're the party of family values. I'm looking forward to the interview you have with Bill Clinton's illegitimate son. And she immediately shuts him down. Come on, please. That's rubbish. He doesn't have an illegitimate son. You have no proof of that. Oh, and just totally shuts him down. And that is where the double standard comes in. Because here, they're just going to shut it down. No proof, conspiracy theory. But then roll out these Trump's accusers who go by Jane Doe and just came out of the woodwork making these allegations at a very convenient time against Donald Trump. Those, you know, we, we just have to take those as fact. So it's total hypocrisy here, and we know Donald Trump is the real deal. Anonymous has announced that a video secretly recorded by Israeli intelligence showing former President Bill Clinton raping a 13-year-old girl on billionaire pedophile Jeffrey Epstein's orgy island will be released. An island that Bill Clinton visited at least 26 times, according to flight logs, and had left his Secret Service detail behind on at least five occasions. The propaganda machine is doubling down on its brainwashing, as Clifford Cunningham reports. An upcoming episode of Law & Order SVU will feature a Donald Trump-like character accused of rape. Actor Gary Cole will portray a wealthy and boorish man who makes a run for the White House on an upcoming SVU episode in titled Unstoppable, according to Variety. The plot of the episode will be based on a dubious civil lawsuit filed against Donald Trump by a woman referred to as Jane Doe in court documents who alleges Trump raped her when she was 13 years old in the mid-1990s. The lawsuit, presided over by a judge appointed by Obama, is scheduled for a hearing in December after the presidential election. The decision to depict a character identical to Donald Trump accused of raping women is a concerted ploy to manipulate the people who watched the episode into conflating a fictitious story with reality and conclude Trump is actually a rapist. Meanwhile, the mainstream media continues to portray Trump as a rapist. They continually cover up any mention of the true abuser of women, Bill Clinton. Is America really this stupid? Maybe 10 years ago. But today, 
Oh, well, Major, I want to start with a short video clip from 1992 from Entertainment Tonight, which is owned by CBS Television. In it, Donald Trump is heard making questionable comments about a young girl. Let's listen to that. Soon, Thursday night. You going up the escalator? Yes. I'm going to be dating her in 10 years. Can you believe it? And the breaking news at this hour, right now just breaking, a damning report from the New York Times that claims Donald Trump inappropriately touched two women. The first nearly three decades ago, the second in 2005. He was like an octopus. It was like he had six arms. He was all over the place. And if he had stuck with the upper part of the body, I, I might not have gotten... I might not have gotten that upset. But it's when he started putting his hand up my skirt. They're going to start making charges about Bill Clinton. One would presume also Hillary Clinton. I presume he's going to talk about WikiLeaks and John Podesta's uh, emails. You know it. They know it. I know it. And pretty much the whole world knows it. The establishment and their media enablers wield control over this nation through means that are very well known. Anyone who challenges their control is deemed a sexist, a racist, a xenophobe, and morally deformed. They will do whatever's necessary. The Clintons are criminals. Remember that. They're criminals. This is well documented. And the establishment that protects them has engaged in a massive cover-up of widespread criminal activity at the State Department and the Clinton Foundation in order to keep the Clintons in power. Never in history have we seen such a cover-up as this. Mainstream media as we know it, with a democratic operative agenda so foolish, they don't even realize they no longer control the narrative. Would it surprise you to know that Hillary Clinton says one thing in public and a different thing in private? Not at all, right? We're learning more and more about her emails, through her emails, through the WikiLeaks revelations that are continuing to unfold. We're covering them here on InfoWars every single day this week, letting you know about the latest dump. And what we've learned today, Hillary Clinton supports the TPP in private while she denounces it publicly. That's not a shocker there. This article is up on our website, written by Kit Daniels. A new email reveals divide between Clinton's public and private positions regarding the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Now, Clinton was privately in support of the TPP, as you recall. Uh, we've covered this here on InfoWars. She wanted the wiggle room to publicly criticize it, according to a leaked email uh, from the Clinton speechwriter, Dan Sherwin. And in 2015, this is when this email was written, Sherwin was writing a speech that assumes, quote, she ultimately is going to support both the Trade Promotion Authority and the TPP, but gives herself an out to publicly backtrack from the corporate trade deals. So it sounds like she's talking out of both sides of her mouth. He goes on to say, this draft assumes she ultimately is going to support both of them. Um, it focuses on what we need to happen to produce a positive result with the TPP and cast support for the TPA as one of those steps. It also says that we should walk away from the final agreement, doesn't meet the test of creating more jobs and it displaces helping the middle class. Of course, they're always plugging the middle class while she publicly, you know, privately pillages it with um, unnecessary tax hikes, um, I'm paraphrasing here, and strengthening our national security. So it does look like there is some sort of concern over national security. She has no problem taking money from foreign dictators that compromise American national security while publicly denouncing terrorism. And this is no exception. We've seen this. She wants to be able to put a public face uh, saying that she's anti the TPP because she knows that the American people are on to what this trade deal is. It's a very bad deal. It cuts manufacturing jobs here in the States. It outsources them to places like North Vietnam. Um, it, it does a lot of different things negatively to our food supply. We don't have the checks and balances that we need on poultry and, and shellfish coming into the U.S. We, we have to import X amount of dollars. We give away internet freedoms. It's this monstrous bulk bill that basically takes away our freedoms, our rights, compromises our jobs, compromises our security. Oh, by the way, Clinton, according to her speechwriter, she wants to be seen as publicly against it while she privately 
ensures its passage. What does that sound like? It sounds like everything that she's done prior to this. Typical Clinton here, and we know that from uh, last Sunday night's debate, that's exactly how she does things. She wants a personal persona, and which is public, and a private persona, which is just hers, which is how she really feels. And this is no exception. Now, Kit goes on to write, please take a look at this article when you have a moment in its entirety. It's up on our website. He goes on to talk about uh, Sherwin and this email and how the TPP, Clinton has called the TPP the gold standard trade deal. And she's had to backpedal a lot on that because she's received a lot of negative attention because the TPP is bad for Americans and bad for American jobs specifically. Uh, but Clinton, she's downplayed her, her support um, after both Sanders and Donald Trump have pointed out that the TPP would kill jobs and grant more control over a transnational unaccountable corporate structure. Additionally, Clinton's ally, Virginia Governor Terry McAuliffe, she, they, he also revealed that Clinton would ultimately support the TPP, despite claiming that she originally opposed it during the primary battle with Sanders. Now, we know that Sanders, Sanders, he had some good points about him. He was in support of the little guy, if you will, which made him very anti-TPP. We know that Clinton, uh, she's for anybody that gives her the most money, basically. We've seen that. History has, has shown us that time and again, and it looks like she is propping up the Trans-Pacific Partnership in support of it, although she doesn't want you to believe so. I'm Margaret Halve reporting for InfoWars.com. Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Friday, October 14th, 2016, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight. The battle lines have been drawn in Syria, and Barack Obama could take a major step towards an all-out war with Russia. Meanwhile, Putin tells the Russian people to urgently prepare for a devastating radioactive conflict, and he tells them to find out where the closest bunkers are. Then. The Clinton News Network shuts down comments on Bill Clinton's illegitimate son. And look how much money the Republican establishment is spending on TV ads for Donald Trump. A whopping zero. That's right, not one single political ad from the GOP, who spent $42 million on Mitt Romney ads before the last election. All that plus much more up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Welcome back to the InfoWars Nightly News. Owen Schroyer joined by the Citizens for Trump Special Projects Director, Jack Posobiec. Jack, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me on, Owen. It's great to be here. Well, you have recently put out on your Twitter some of the Trump internal polling, and you sent these to me. There's six different polls that you guys are analyzing from different sides, different angles. Just as an overall perspective, what do these internal polls mean to you? So what we're tracking on this, and I was actually given a, uh, authorization by General Flynn, General Michael Flynn, to release these to the public. What we're tracking is essentially not so much as the mainstream media would like you to have it as, you know, a horse race, who's ahead per day per day. We're actually forecasting forward who is going to win on election day, because as we all know, that's the only day that actually matters in this. And as this is forecasting, we're seeing that Hillary has launched her operation, her smear campaign that's being run by David Brock way too early. She had a spike in, in support and Trump had a drop in support, but it's already being reversed because it was too fast. Whereas Trump's support is very steady, Clinton's spike is up and it's gone. We're seeing resistance lines, uh, basically a, a bottom of, of support for Trump that is going to reach up and we're seeing a ceiling in terms of support for Clinton. So her support can only go so high, but Trump's is getting higher and higher as every day goes by. And it looks that by election day, his support will be much higher than hers. And that's actually a good point you make when you look at these polls. It does seem like most of them are trending in the direction that you just indicated. But it is a day-by-day -day basis, and it's interesting to see on Election Day how it will be. I think the one poll that indicates what you're talking about is the both campaigns predicted winner campaigns, where you see it going up and down, and it always depends on the media narrative that day. What have you found looking at these? So the way we've seen it is... 
things are close out there because what you have is a situation where half the country is listening to the mainstream media and half of the country is listening to social media, new media, other sources. And so because it's so close that it's like I, I've described it as a sword fighting on a tightrope, you know, like the old Errol Flynn movies. Um, any any one difference for either campaign, any hit, any allegation, it's swinging it back and forth. So that amount of volatility isn't something that's usually seen in campaigns. But some analysis that we've done today, Paul Joseph Watson actually did some great analysis, that more Americans are focused on WikiLeaks, more Americans are focused on the actual scandals that have come out rather than any of these media allegations that they seem to be drubbing out all of a sudden here in mid-October. Let's talk about the intention to vote. One of the internal polls was measuring intention to vote. It looks like in this campaign, the intention from Trump supporters to vote is just getting more extreme. Like the more negatives that we see coming against Trump, the more fired up we get to go vote from him. Is that what you're seeing? That's exactly correct. What they don't understand about Trump supporters is that Trump supporters, as we found in through all through this election, and we saw it through the primaries, that the more you push back on Trump supporters, the more supporters he actually gets and the more it actually galvanizes their support. They've tried very hard to use wedge issues, to use demoralization, to use pretty much every tactic, every uh, Alinsky tactic, every Leninist tactic that they can think of to break apart the Trump coalition, but they're not able to do it because they've rallied around something that's bigger than simply Donald Trump himself, and that's the idea of taking America back from this global elite. And you mentioned the Saul Alinsky tactic, that one of those tactics is getting out in front of your opponent on an attack that's going to be levied against you, such as Bill Clinton's rapes and now all these women coming forward saying Donald Trump sexually assaulted them. But I think that, like you said, the more negatives we see, the more fired up we, we want Donald Trump to be president because we don't like the mainstream media. We know that they're our enemies, so whatever they're pro, we're basically the anti of whatever they're throwing out there at us. And I think that the internal polling is showing that. Now let's talk about the... African-American internal polling, it does look like Trump is actually gaining support there, even though it's still very low. That's actually right. And there's been a lot of factors working towards that. Uh, the revelation of Bill Clinton's uh, illegitimate son, Danny Williams, who was banished coming forward and, and revealing himself to the world, the fact that he's uh, black American, the fact that Trump's performance in the debates has been getting exponentially better as debates go forward. That's been very very helpful. And we're seeing more and more that uh, Hillary Clinton's statements in the past, such as the African-Americans referring to them as super predators, is coming out and is getting into the mainstream, mostly because people are going and telling people, even at Democrat events, that about these comments, as well as the comments about rape. And so while the Democrats, their coalition has been based around the Barack Obama vote, it's, it's showing that African-Americans are not supportive of Hillary Clinton the way they were of Barack Obama. And that was a faulty miscalculation on their part. Yeah, a miscalculation that they honestly can't afford at this point, and I think that that's why they're trying to force the illegal immigrants into this election for a voter block. Let's talk about what we found with the internal polling on women. Now, there was a great point made in the email, who wants America to be secure? That's women. That's usually one of the biggest things people think about when they actually are in the booth about to vote, is yeah. who is going to provide me the most safety, just like we saw with the intention to vote, that women are polling stronger with Trump since the main media's attacks have gotten stronger. That's exactly right. And because women are looking at the situation out there. And if you remember, Mr. Trump has actually been very clever in the way he's rolled this out from day one in his very first speech. A lot of people look overlook this fact. But when he talked about building the wall and when he talked about uh, illegals coming into the U.S., he mentioned very specifically rapists. And this was done because these that is a protection of women statement. Mr. Trump, Donald Trump, is the women's protection candidate. He will secure uh, not only our society, but provide law and order for our cities, for our neighborhoods, for our uh, suburbs, our inner cities, you name it. This is something that strikes home with a lot of women. And in fact, there's a little uh, a line I was saying yesterday that the mainstream media is pushing so hard to tell women that they have to vote for Hillary Clinton. And I don't know about you, ma'am, but in my experience, when you tell a woman what she should do, that's a great way to get her to do the opposite. You know, I don't know. I think that maybe it's a more powerful thing with women, but I'm the same way. I've always been, you tell me what to do. Uh, you can ask my parents. I typically want to do the uh, exact opposite or my teachers. But uh, tell me, you know, because we see all of these polls on television saying Clinton's winning, Clinton winning. You know, apparently she's been dominating this whole time. Tell me, why do we trust these polls, not just because they're 
you know, aggregating to the future, but as, as a more accurate measurement of the on the now basis, why are these polls more accurate, do you think, than what we see on CNN or any of the other mainstreams? One of the main reasons is because these voters were carefully selected and scientifically uh, chosen to represent different parts of the country and different demographics of the country at the beginning of the election. They use a much wider sample size, 3,000 versus the 200 or so I've seen in some of these mainstream media polls. And uh, the, these polls are based on the exact same group of voters that have been going since the very first onset of the general election. So it's the same group of people. You know, it was early in this election cycle, Donald Trump said he could, I don't remember the exact quote, but shoot someone in the middle of Times Square and still do well in the polls. I think that we can now actually see this in the polls. In fact, he might actually raise in the polls if he did that. I'm being facetious. But really, we're seeing the, the backlash of the mainstream narrative in these polls and it certainly depends on who it is there was a story where uh, where donald trump actually saw someone getting mugged in in times square once had the car stopped and ran after and chased the guy and then the guy dropped the lady's purse and ran off so trump has, has shown that he's the kind of guy that yeah we know that he's brash and we know that he, he's not politically correct but people like the guy and we, they know that when he's fighting he's going to fight for america just as hard well jack you've got a new report you were telling me about off air uh that we're not going to get in too much now but just tease the audience a little bit on this next breaking report you're going to have so i basically uh infiltrated a a world bank summit earlier today and I spent some time just kind of sitting in the back and listening to these people talk. And they talk, they're talking about how they want to set up the new world order. How, and that's what they refer to it as, the international world order. And they're talking about taking countries that don't play along and what they're going to do to coerce them or potentially look at regime change in specific areas around the country. So I'm putting that report together as we speak. Well, Jack, thank you so much. We're going to make sure that they don't steal this election from Donald Trump. I propose that everyone voting for Donald Trump wears red on election day. That might be a, an easy way to fight this legally. What do you think about that? So Citizens for Trump, we're actually partnering with uh, with Roger Stone on this. We're working with his Stop the Steal organization. If you go to stopthesteal.org, you can look at it. We're devising a sort of exit poll that's designed specifically to fight voter fraud. And we're putting together what we call voter fraud strike forces of lawyers who are experts in election law as, long, as well as cybersecurity experts. And I'm talking special ops guys, former special ops guys, former people in the soft community. A lot of these guys support Donald Trump because they've had access to classified information and seen what Hillary and her cronies have done with our country. One person who's a master at rubbing salt in people's wounds doesn't pay taxes, doesn't even contribute to his own family charity, doesn't pay his contractors, takes the life savings of people that go to Trump you and don't get anything except Trump. Justice! But he's really good at making people mad. Hi, my name is Danny Williams. I'm here today. This is my first time on television today to talk to Elizon to prove to the world the truth about me being President Clinton's son. My first time in Austin, Texas, to tell the truth about my father, William Jefferson Clinton. I would like to tell Mr. Clinton that I want to shake his hand and introduce him to my kids, which is his grandkids. I don't know if he knows or not, but I got five kids, three girls, two boys, ages ranges from three to 13, and I would love for them to meet their grandfather. This is a true story. It's not fake. The DNA test was false. And I just ask you to believe in my story. You can look me up on my Facebook page, my Twitter. My name is Danny Williams. On my Facebook page, I got a fan page named Danny Williams Clinton. Look me up, inbox me, I inbox you back. I just want to thank everybody that has been showing me support, that uh, continue to show me support. And my story is true. So please, thank you. I'm here with Danny Williams. He claims to be the son of William Jefferson Clinton. Now, he's been trying to get his story out there for years. Um, you know, Danny, you say you just want to meet your dad. You want to prove the story once and for all. You want to get some finality there with the DNA test. Now, we know that CNN 
uh, and other networks have ordered a media blackout on this story. So right. you're only going to get it here. So I encourage everyone out there to share this video, share it on YouTube, share it to your Facebook page. We want some answers. Um, and then I know, of course, we can go to your Facebook page as well. Uh, but Danny, let's get right into it. So when did you first hear about being Bill Clinton's son? Basically, I've been knowing all my life. But for me to start realizing, I had to be about like eight, seven years old. And, you know, my I got a big family. So all of my siblings and my aunties, kids, and all of them, they all know. So they all, every, every, since we've been growing up, they said, uh, look at him. Don't he look like Bill Clinton? That's Bill Clinton's son. You know, people that we don't know know. And they'll say the same thing, you know. He, don't he look like Bill Clinton? That's Bill Clinton's son. And it's just... It's circled around Little Rock, Arkansas all my life. So I've been knowing basically since five years old. Mm -hmm. And so what, did your mother tell you this? Did your aunt? Right, correct. My mother, my aunt, my mother. Story never changed about uh, Bill Clinton being my father. She always told me. And, you know, I go into detail, ask her, how did you meet him or where? And, you know, she, she told me she used to date him on several occasions. So it never changed. And my aunt, she's consistent with her story the same. Mm -hmm. And so what did she tell you when you t just kind of take us through the story that your mom would repeat? So basically my mom said, you know, I, I go, I ask her, I said, mom, I know I say, I had to been like eight or five or six, seven years old. But I, I went and asked, I said, mom, who, you know, I got tired of people going, oh, he looked like Bill Clinton. That's his Bill Clinton son. So I asked, I said, mom, you know, who is my daddy? She's like, sit down. Let me, you know, it's going to. You need to sit down and hear this. So she sat me down. She you know she told me that she used to date uh, Governor Clinton, and she was like, "That's my father." You know, she go into details about how you know he used to come pick her up, and she used to ride down to his mother home and hope, and you know all these other things about him being my father. So, she, like I said, the story never changed. She always been consistent of the same story. Mm -hmm. And then, so how many times, I guess, you know, I've, I've heard some people kind of just, I mean, this story is everywhere now. I'm seeing right. on Instagram, even memes, right. Facebook, but a lot of people commenting in the YouTube videos. How could your mom be convinced that you were Bill Clinton's son based on her profession? Based on her profession. I mean, my mom said that at the time she was the, on, he was the only Caucasian guy that she slept with at the time. And. But then that, I guess, I say, I try to timeline it up. I say I was conceived in 1984 around May or March, somewhere like that. And at the time, she was saying that, you know, it was on several cases. He come, you know, three, four, five times the month of May, 1984. You know, it, so, like I said, it's consistent. Of, she said he was the only guy that she was, was dating at the time. So, right when my mom got pregnant with me, she was pregnant with me and married my little brother, sister, and daddy. You know what I'm saying? So, which who I got the name Danny Williams from. So, I mean, he never told me he wasn't my father. But growing up, I knew he wasn't my father. I didn't look like him. From him being dark and my mama being dark, I knew that they weren't my, I knew that my, my father wasn't my father. So, you know, I, I asked her, you know, who my father is? You know, she'll tell me, you know, Bill Clinton, your father. And I said, how you know? She knows she'd tell me mm -hmm. on the uh, cases when she dated him or whatnot. And then so what sort of things happened throughout your life to kind of validate this feeling that you had that Bill Clinton was your dad? What sort of things happened to confirm? OK, um, basically, like, you know, different articles that have been put out over the years from 93 all the way up to 1999, the fake DNA test. And, you know. Me growing up and by me hearing that he's my father at the age seven to eight, so I goes and find pictures of him, this and then. I just look at him and I look at me and then, you know, it just, the pictures just start growing more and more, you know. Yeah, but no seeing the pictures, you, definitely, right. you guys have exactly striking resemblance there. Well, well now I've, I know you were um, talking about some different things that used to happen with the state troopers, uh, right. stuff like that, that kind of convinced you, like, wow, that's a little odd. Right. My mom and my aunt, Lucille Bolton, has told me on uh, cases where he, where Clinton had money delivered, seven one hundred dollars delivered every month to my mother's home, placed in the mailbox, and also Christmas presents delivered on Christmas. 
And, you know, that gave me another thought of why he go out the way on doing this. You know, is he really my father or do he, is he trying to be in my life? So, you know, that make you think. Yeah. He was trying to do the right thing. Exactly. Uh, well, so when did that stop? Did that go on for quite some time? Many years? Everything stopped 1993 when President Clinton made president. Mm -hmm. Everything stopped. The, the people that had allegations about him having a black son, they called it the black sheep of the family, which was written by uh, a preacher by the name of McIntosh that was, you know, putting articles about, about me being Clinton's son. And he hushed up and, you know, everything stopped in 93. My mom wasn't receiving no more money, nothing. So mm -hmm. about 94 and 95, comes the uh, Globe, you know, different magazines, different, you know, news stations coming to do interviews on her having a black son. So, you know, all of that, all of those allegations, as I do my research, make me, you know, goes back to what was he trying to hide? Mm -hmm. Right. Well, because, you know, that was almost 10 years that you're getting these uh, exactly. $100 bills in the mail, Christmas presents. But then there was a, a, this alleged DNA test that came out. Exactly. It turns out there was no DNA test. Talk to me a little bit about that, which I think is so fascinating because if it was Star Magazine or The Globe or National Enquirer, the mainstream media is always quick to point out, well, that's the Enquirer. You can't trust right. anything that's coming out from them. But with this particular case, when, when, uh, when they said, oh, we got the DNA test, it's not true, it's, you move on, they took that story and ran with it with no exactly. proof didn't try to validate it for themselves. They just said, you know, much like what we see with anything that kind of happens with the Clintons and any I bad stories. Right, exactly. I feel with the DNA test that took place in 1999, I feel that it tried to discredit my story on the truth of me telling my story as in when I got older. I, I feel like it discredited me. Plus, at the time, she was running for Senate of State, 99-2000. So, you know, it's just... Different thoughts and different, you know, you don't know how, I don't know how, you know, they was planning, but I feel like they was trying to discredit my story and me proving who I am today. So, of course, they would want to put some type of intimidation to silence your story, discredit you, of course. But yes, ma'am. What type of things did they do to kind of have your mom hush up from telling this story? I mean, my biggest thing is basically they was trying to hush her up, you know, because my mom was pushed out a two-story window. And from my understanding, we thinking that either state troopers or secret service members was trying to hush her up on her talking about her having a black son with the President Clinton. Welcome back. Well, according to the most recent Google Trends, Internet users are far more interested in the WikiLeaks data dump than they are all of these Donald Trump sexual accusations. Yet... We're not hearing about that from the mainstream media. They are obsessed over these Trump tapes and over the sex accusations. Uh, Owen Schroyer joins me now. What do you think about this? Now, we know from these WikiLeaks, they do want to maintain a dumbed-down, compliant citizenry. Is that what this is all about, well, hiding the truth? It does show the difference between the mainstream media, what they want to cover, and what the American people are actually interested in, where we'll have a media blackout on all of these WikiLeaks emails which the truth of the matter is, I mean, you and I have talked about this, how we want to talk about these WikiLeaks emails all the time. We want to try to cover them all. There's too much. There's too much. We can't possibly even do it. And the American people want to know about this. They want to see this. And what we have to do now is we have to go online. We have to look for alternative media who's actually covering this, get on Twitter, the people that are sharing these. And that's what the American people want. They're clearly more interested in this. We've seen an internal polling that all of the attacks on Donald Trump all the false accusations aren't hurting him. And I think that we've really reached a time now, Leanne, where people are so disgusted with the mainstream media where whatever they're saying, you're either going to believe the opposite of or you're just going to kind of ignore and know that the American people don't really believe or care about what they're talking about. We're going to have to go out and do our own investigations to figure out what the real news breaking is. Right. And that's why they are panicking right now. That's why we have Obama coming out calling it the wild, wild west. We need to do something about it developing a ministry of truthiness. You have YouTube executives there, Google execs, saying that they want to level the playing field and take the power away from the people, which is what where it's, it's placed rightly so now with the Internet. They want it back into those three companies that can push out their own propaganda. So one of the big things coming out of WikiLeaks 
reveals that it was actually Hillary Clinton's campaign that started pushing this whole Obama was a, is a Muslim narrative back in 2008. But they want you to think that it's Donald Trump who is this racist, sexist, xenophobic bigot. Uh, so this is liberal tolerance right there. Yeah, not only do we see that the Clinton campaign lied about whoever started the Obama is a Muslim thing. Of course, we've seen about how they lied about hundreds of things in these WikiLeaks. But also in this particular email that you were referencing, they try to demonize Obama by associating him with cocaine. Uh, they try to demonize Obama by associating him with trying to stop Americans from getting handguns. They talk about how, and of course this was accurate, we see this in the email, that they said Obama was going to negotiate with terrorist states like Iran, and that ended up actually coming true. So who knows how much truth there is to all of these claims they're making? Well, but it, it does too, show they, how they used to they used to butt heads on these issues, and the Clinton campaign lied about who started it. Right, and so they're trying to kind of work with the survey. Like, what are some good? We want to hit them negative, but we don't want to go too negative. So they're throwing out some things that they were going to go with that it ultimately got taken out of the survey. One of them being. Hey, Obama was uh, grew up among Muslims in the world's most populous Islamic country. So obviously, that was a problem for them back then. Uh, growing up around Muslims in an Isl Islamic country, that was a negative fact. Also, they wanted to talk about um, what was it? Uh, gay adoption. Oh, can you believe he supports issues like gay adoption? Meanwhile, now Hillary Clinton, you know, years later, she's just the LGBT champion. Well, and it's again, like I said, we can talk about this is one example. Where a conspiracy theory or something that we're talking about or a lie out of the Clinton campaign can be proven a lie or the conspiracy theories can be proven correct, whether it be about Obama, whether it be about Scalia. Now we're seeing, you know, weird talks about um, what happened with Scalia and different terms that they're using mm -hmm. there. So, I mean, the wet works, who knows? Yeah, the wet works talking about Scalia. And here, you know, here's another one. We talk about how Hillary Clinton has mental problems and problems with her memory. There's a lot of emails that have said in the emails, people referencing how Hillary has trouble remembering. Hillary has trouble getting upstairs. Hillary has trouble with health. Here's an issue right here. She's been sticking pretty closely to the new points. And then it says right after that, as best she can remember. So, so even they're kind of in the inner office, they, they kind of know. They put it in parentheses, like as best as she can remember, you know, let's. Like, yeah, we recognize that she's having trouble with memory. So, you know. And it, you know, it's not, they're not Doing being. Doing the best she can. Yeah, they're not being negative about it. They're just, it's like kind of a matter of fact thing. Like, oh, you know, we're going to have Hillary talking about her new talking points. You know, the best she can remember, we know she's an old lady and she's having memory problems, but she's going to try her best. You know, she tries not to lie. Was this pre or post earpiece? <laughs> uh, this was pre. Like this was dating back to 2015, actually. Yeah. Okay. So now we see she's kind of getting those orders coming down. And then also, of course, uh, Rep. Marsha Blackburn is saying, you know, how can people vote for Clinton? when her own staff is having a difficult time dealing with her lying. So we know when WikiLeaks, some of the emails that have come out, they're like, what is the deal with this private server? Why, why would she do this? How are we supposed to make this look good for her? And kind of going back and forth, like even they are having a difficult time figuring out how they can circle, circle back around and make it look good. And think about this, Leanne, because this is how honest Donald Trump was and how right he was when he said the Clintons or Hillary Clinton's biggest um, you know, fan right now, or the biggest, you know, campaigner for her is the mainstream media. Mm -hmm. Marsha Blackburn asks, you know, her own campaign doesn't know what to do with all of these lies. They can't cover up all these lies, all of these email leaks, all of this stuff is coming out. So, but who's covering it? The mainstream media is covering for them. They are, it's like we had uh, Dolly Kyle on today. She talks about the magic disappearing act of news. That's what the mainstream news is doing with this. Right. It's like they don't even have to come up and defend Hillary Clinton. Because if you just look at the television news or if you're part of the drive-by media experience, you're going to have no idea about any of these WikiLeaks emails. You're going to have right. no idea about the fact that the Hillary Clinton campaign should be covering for all these lies. Instead, the only thing highlighted in the mainstream news is what the Trump campaign has to do to try to cover for all the false accusations that we've seen against Donald Trump. So it's the exact opposite. So. You know, I agree, you know, what can they do to cover for all these lies? Well, fortunately for them, they don't have to do too much because the mainstream media is doing it for them. Right, and in every single aspect, obviously you have Google alternating the uh, algorithm and the search results in favor of Hillary Clinton. Uh, they have an entire data mining company that helps her campaign out. Um, the, the news media, print media, establishment media, YouTube, I mean, you name it. They're, in every single angle, they're trying to prop this woman up. And here... You know, if you want to talk about Donald Trump being the real deal. 
Even the Republican Party has spent zero advertising dollars on TV ads for Donald Trump. They spent $42 million to back Mitt Romney in 2012. But they spent zero on TV ads for Trump. Now, we know a lot of that is because he's financing his own campaign. He doesn't want to be in anyone's pocket. But he doesn't have any help. I mean, he's got so much stacked against him. He really is going to have to pull off a miracle. And isn't that what America wants to somebody that spends less and then gets more out of it? That's something Donald Trump's been talking about one of his strengths in business that he'd like to be to our country. You know, I, I think that you could look at what the government's been doing and the spending out of the Obama administration, especially, but even administrations before that, more spending, more spending, more spending, right. but less efficiency. This is something that I think Donald Trump wants to reverse. Right. You're fired. And then so let's quickly just in the last two minutes move on to voter fraud. Because right. we're seeing rampant voter fraud. I've already had people sending me uh, tweets on Twitter saying, you know, my wife tried to vote and her vote was changed. Luckily, she checked it before she hit complete, that it was changing her vote from Trump to Clinton. So people, you need to either bring your cameras in the voting booth with you if you can, look at it on your phone, but pay attention. But here we have uh, data suggesting millions of voter registrations are fraudulent or invalid. And that is enough to tip an election. Um, let me see. I think it was like 18 million if yeah. you're thinking just, you know, one out of every uh, few. So 18 million invalid voter registration. That is enough to tip an election. Uh, well, it's a very scathing report here that was just highlighted. And some of the highlights are in Colorado, multiple instances of dead people attempting to vote. A woman named Sarah Sosa, who died in 2009, cast ballots in 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013. In Virginia, nearly 20 voter applications were turned in and under names of dead people. They're doing this thing in Texas called vote harvesting. Now, this is unbelievable. I would imagine they're doing this in other places, too. If they're doing it in Texas, which is a Republican stronghold. Harvesting is the practice of illegally obtaining signatures of valid voters and then using that signature to vote as that person. I mean, that is that is a jailable crime right there. Right. I mean, th this needs to be investigated, and there's more. 1.8 million deceased individuals listed as voters. Approximately 2.7 million people have registered in more than one county. So this is right. obvious voter fraud that needs to be investigated by someone other than independent investigators. Right, and then, of course, you have liberals, again, repeating this argument that that's a complete Figment of your imagination, voter fraud does not exist. What's the Ministry of Truth election. has decided and they have fact-checked reality on your behalf. Thank you all so much for tuning in to the show tonight. We will see you here again next week, 7 p.m. Central. And be sure to tune in for our live coverage of the debate.